what we're thinking next. Rear brake, important bits of the bike. Yep, so I'm sticking with the brake that came with the bike because it's a Magura, it's actually from a 2005 model, which is one of the better levers they did in my personal opinion. Back in the day, we used to do a few things to these to make them a little bit better. Just I think, checking it out, yeah. I think you know what I mean. Yeah. So one thing these brakes used to do because of the design is actually quite a sharp corner here, which means when we're riding trials, we actually put side to side forces on the lever and they can crack. Yeah, there's a little tiny, tiny start of the hairline right in the bottom of that corner there. If you cut across there from the flat portion here to that corner, it prevents that bit from cracking off basically and then the lever will last pretty much forever. I mean this is 15 years old, we've seen them 20, 25 years old before yeah. and they're still working so um, yeah. So that's the first thing we're going to do is cut away to make the lever, get rid of a, a, a stress riser essentially. Yep. Second thing to make my hands have a much easier life is change the fluid in this. Oh okay yeah, 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 we can do that definitely. So Magura's, the hydraulic brake, they're full of oil, That's Magura right. mineral fluid. That is quite a viscous fluid. So the uh, speed that the piston comes back is fairly slow. Yeah. And it means that it's harder to pull. You can more effort with your finger and yeah. a, in a comp. On, off, so, on, off, on, off, yeah. So what is a fluid that is less viscous than oil? Water. Water. Or Trautec. Great fluid that we've got ah. in the workshop in here as well. So. Plug. <laughs> Plug, yeah. So this is a new thing since when I rode trials, we used to just have to fill our brakes with water, but not anymore. So we've got Trartec do a safer version for brakes, I guess. So yeah, obviously water in a hydraulic system is not ideal. We used to do it anyway, but we, asked, we had to you know, maintain our brakes more than usual. Uh, and also the brakes used to freeze in winter. <laughs> <laughs> which is the most crazy thing you've ever felt if you've never had Magura's freeze on you before. So actually that's pretty cool that we've now got options that means don't have any of these issues. So yeah, let's uh, change the fluid in the brake, make it a lot easier for my hands in the competitions. So thinking if we're gonna get the, the brake all apart and bleed it, um, what happens with this, this is like a, a nylon hose, yeah. and over time if you bend it backwards and forwards quite a lot, it kind of necks in and gets thinner, and then it can start to get quite thin like it is at the edge of that fit in there and if you can see it on the camera but there's like a distinctive line in the yeah. in the hose and that is not far off being dead basically okay and with the shape of the crossover being like that it's always pulling on this outside corner yeah and it's kind of exposed you can kick it with your heel um, we see crossovers fail fairly regularly so while it's off I think it's worth putting a new bit of hose on there um, and it just lengthening the crossover as well helps because on a, on a bike with a really wide rim you've kind of got a Pull the crossover down like that. Yeah. It's fine on a cross country bike where the where the, where the brake, pad, brake pads are really close together. But as soon as you get a really really wide rim, the crossover's a little bit short. Last another little tip that I've just seen, seen as well with these brakes. With these these brakes, you see a few people when they, they strip the thread out of the cast in there. It actually only goes in that far. Yeah. So only half the amount of threads that are available. So if you put in a slightly longer bolt, it's more likely that you'll you won't ever strip that thread out of there as well. Okay. What we're we saying? Uh, well, I'll just. Checking it's all going to be going to be good to go when it's all bled up. Uh, I think that hose is probably a little bit short. Is that because of the longer stem? Or possibly the longer stem. Um, possibly it's been cut down a bit short in its life, at some point in its life. But ideally, you really want to be able to spin the bars probably 360 yeah. without it snagging. That is all good. Um, so you get you get to, you know <laughs> if you've been if you've dropped you've been the bike or something. Yeah, that would not last. The bars just go wee, be. and that'd be <laughs> that'd be you know game over. So we'll add a bit of hose to that as well to make sure that you're uh, you're not going to lose a you know lose like a, a five in a section or something because of a broken hose. Um, Magura fittings, a lot of them are actually reusable. So the olives themselves, that's this little do on the end of the hose. The gold bit. The gold bit here. That gets crimped down to, to, to fit the hose to seal the system. Yeah. But the shroud nut, which is this bit here with the 8mm spanner flats, and the barbed fitting, which is like a Christmas tree shape, it gets pushed into the hose. Yeah. Um, you can reuse those as many times as you want. So if you get in any new bits and bobs, you don't have to buy new shroud nuts and new barbed fittings. Um, the hose itself can also be reused. So because we're going to put a longer main hose on, I'm actually going to cut you a new crossover out of your old main hose. Okay. Make sure you use that. Nice. Recycling. Yeah. So to get the old barbed fittings off, 
easiest way we find is just to clamp the fitting in a vise and draw a standing knife blade on the length of the hose a couple of times. You don't have to push too hard and you'll start to feel the little bumps in the in the, uh, the barb fitting. Once you've got there, you can easily just snap the hose off and then you've got a fitting that you can reuse. Perfect. So, disc brake hoses, they have a little insert that gets studded in. That's right, yeah. These don't, do they? No, disc, it's, it's a much lower pressure system with the, the rim brake, so you haven't got the inserts. This is, it's a bit of a weird system and it uh, blows people's minds that you can just literally just push the fitting on. But it does work, it's, uh, it's a really reliable system. So yeah, when you've got a really wide rim, the cylinders are pushed out quite far. And then if you've got a standard length crossover, it's really got to be pulled in tight. Yeah. So we're going to go a bit longer to give it some give it some bow up here. So that was quite a short length anyway, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a little bit shorter than normal. Um, so we'll add about three or four centimetres to that, and that should give you much more uh, adjustment on the brakes as well. Cool. And one thing I've seen you guys do is, like, rather than having a crossover, you do a splitter? Oh yeah, it's like a little Y piece. So you have three fittings. One, one comes in, and then two come out. So the hose comes down the centre and then one line to each slave cylinder. Um, there's no real advantage other than need to hose routing. Um, it doesn't equalise the pressure in the system because the pressure is the same through the system. It doesn't push fluid to cylinders equally. Um, it just it's just a much neater system and you can kind of run the you can run the splitter say under there and then the two hoses just poke out nice and neat to the two cylinders. Yeah, okay. And it just stops that kink, which is what your founders deteriorate that hose that you've got there. Um, so it's a nice little upgrade, you're probably looking at 15 quid plus obviously the time to fit the stuff. Yeah. Um, but it's not something that's essential. Cool, so we're going to pull the lever apart and get this little sort of bit off the back there. Um, the lever is actually in really good condition, really snappy and fast. Um, it's been bled with the official Magura fluid all its life. You can see some on the packet there, it's like a bit of a funny greeny colour and it's oh, got yeah. a really distinctive smell and it, it sort of feels quite sort of waxy and oily. Um, if you've got a brake that's been bled with water, you might find that either the slave cylinders or the lever are a bit sluggish and a bit stiff and tight. Um, bit of a weird one, but the pistons are made of nylon, and water goes into the nylon and actually swells it up. Oh yeah. So you're leaving it and look quite sticky. Um, the way around that is to bleed it with the proper fluid. But before that, if you take the piston out of the lever, just let it sit somewhere warm like an airing cupboard or a boiler cupboard for a couple of days, the water evaporates out of the nylon oh, really? and it shrinks again and then your brake will work again. It's really weird. Um, <laughs> How did you find that out? Or did uh, you just knowing we, nylon? Yeah, well we noticed that people were having these problems um, and then went online and researched it and I think, that, I think it was like 6% it can increase in size by and we actually measured some pistons and they, they did increase by about 0 0.15, 0 0.1 mil mm. and that was enough to make it jam in the lever. Um, so that's something that Trial Tech took into consideration when working with that fluid. So you can use that fluid without any problems of the piston swelling, but you get the nice snappy feel yeah. of water. So it's pretty good stuff. I'm going to use an angle grinder to do this. Um, what I've done is stuffed a bit of paper in the cylinder bore, so that you can then pull the paper out and it clears any swarf out. The key is just to get rid of that bottom corner down there yeah. without making a mess of the rest of the brake levers. That's what it looks like before, guys. And that's what it looks like afterwards. Nice. Back to the uh, 2005 Magura lever tips. <laughs> We've developed so many of these over the years because basically, as Ali's probably already explained and, and demonstrated in the past, Trials just puts loads on components that manufacturers don't even contemplate. So uh, one thing is this little TPA wheel here. So as you adjust that wheel, it pushes this rod out to adjust how soon the brake comes on. Um, at the very bottom of the, the push rod, there's a little shoulder and it sits against this little black piece at the bottom, which takes all the force. As soon as you screw the wheel out, it's then relying on the threads. And this little wheel's plastic. If you're commuting or mountain biking, you're not pulling the lever anywhere near as hard and it's absolutely fine. As soon as you get on a trials bike and yank the lever on for grim death, you can strip the thread and then you're left with, well, no braking, probably dumped on your ass, so it's mm -hmm. not much fun. Um, so people do uh, upgraded aluminium TPA wheels for that reason. Um, but if you have got a lever where this wheel isn't doing anything, it's, it's very, very likely to be the little wheel that needs changing. Um, they're only like six, seven quid, so it's not game over. You don't need a whole new brake lever. Um, if you do have a problem with it, then you can just change the wheel. Okay. So cutting your Magura hose, it's just plastic nylon, so you can do it with a sharp knife and just press straight through. We've got a little hose cutter that's a bit nifty, makes it a bit easier to cut square. 
And the way that you work with this is you slide the, the shroud on first with the, the spanner flats sort of away from the end. Uh, the cap tells me we've got an olive somewhere around here. That slides over the hose. Then you put that end into your lever or piston or whatever you're using. Slide it down. It should screw in by hand. If it's, if it's not going in by hand, then you've cross-threaded it or something's not right, so stop there and it'll bottom out. And then just get your spanner, tighten it in a couple of turns. The resistance will start to build. And then the official Magura test is to pull the hose by hand as hard as you can. Oh, yeah. And if it comes out, then you need a bit more. If it doesn't come out, you're done. Happy days. So for sizing up your hose, if we go with probably a full 360 bar rotation. Yep. Probably safe. Yeah. And then pull the hose fairly tight. Wrap around the head tube. And that'll be where we want to start from. Might look a bit ungainly at the front there, but it just means that you've definitely got enough hose to spin around. Yeah. Uh, if you I'm going to need that. <laughs> I'm definitely going to need that. <laughs> Back of the bag. Your slave still going to be about there. So I'll add a tiny bit for good luck. Snip that off. And then the uh, the bottom end of the hose is the same as the top end. A lot of these old ones, the older ones, have got a, a six millimeter thread and an eight millimeter thread. So your your shrouding up with the olive goes into the eight millimeter thread size. Just keep pressure on the hose all the time so it's pushed pushed into the cylinder or lever. Right, good tug, there we go. Done. Getting it. So, barb fittings are typically quite tricky to fit. You've got to get that into there. Normally with a hammer is the only way to do it. Yeah. Some companies do specific presses, but we've, we've tried them all and I think they'd be really good if you were at a competition and you broke one and you had to, you know, and you had to clamp the hose up with this and press the fitting in with that. If you hadn't didn't have a vice and a hammer, it'd be great, but um, in the workshop, we just tend to use this method, and it works. It works really well for us. So we've got the little clamping blocks that you can buy from Magura, or again, budget build. Uh, if it was me, I'd be getting a block of wood, drilling a hole through it with a five mil drill bit, cutting down the length of the hole, and then you've got exactly the same setup as that for free. You need to leave about 15 mil sticking out with the clamping block, something like that, and then. Um, what I usually do is get a cross-headed screwdriver and just push it in and give it a little bit of a turn mm -hmm. and that just creates a little angle yeah. for the end of the fitting to go in. And then we've got some spokes, old spokes, um, with a nipple screwed on. Put that through your barb fitting and that helps to guide it straight when it goes in because if you just try and hammer it like that, it's really easy to make it go wonky at the start yeah. and then it splits the hose and then if you've cut a crossover this length, you split the hose, you cut some off it, split the hose, cut some off it, they send too short and you, you, you're stuck. So a little bit of spoke just pushed in there is a really good little guide. And you literally just hammer them in place until the hose is bottomed out at the end of the fit in there. Nice. And then it's six mil on both sides? Six mil thread both sides, yeah. So it's, it's, it's a bit of a weird thread. None of the sort of mountain bike um, this brake stuff is uses this size thread. It's quite specific to the Magura bin brakes, um, so that's why the, the Trialtech hose splitter that we mentioned before, it doesn't work with this brakes. It only works with the uh, with the bin brake hose. There we go. One new crossover made out of old hose. Perfect. <laughs> so we've got the brake all fitted with the new hose, but there's going to be residue of the old oil in the brake cylinders and in the lever. And when you mix that with water, it turns into like a white, gungy, horrible mess that makes you break really sluggish. So we've just got an old track pump with one of the bleed hoses. And if you give it a few shots of air. You see the mist of uh, Magura brake oh, yeah. fluid around the bin. But that should be enough to clear it out so there's no none of that gunky white emulsification in the in the brake once it's yeah. all wet up. So that's good. That's a pretty good tip because I would have assumed you'd like to flush some cleaning solution through it or something. So Yeah, we've messed about for a while with um, bleeding it with like a solution of washing up liquid and water and then pulling the brake a load of times and then flushing it through again and refilling it. It just takes ages and that does like 90% of the job in no time at all. So. Yeah. So bleeding up brakes, it's not a dark art. People people sort of struggle with it. Even bike shops we find quite often um, sort of struggle with this. Um, the key to bleeding a rim brake like this is to bleed from the bottom up 
So you basically float in the air out of the lever. And then have a quick look at the lever and consider the positions of everything. So you've got the piston going that way, you've got the hose coming in this way, and then you've got the outlet from the bleed port at the top. So there's got to be a hole between the piston and the bleed port, and that's going to be where those two intersect. So you want the highest point of the whole system to be that point, so the air floats out of that highest point. That if you try and bleed the brake like this, or like that, the fluid's got to go down, got to flush the piston out, then back out the back out the bleed port, and it's never going to work. So all all the levers are different, but this particular model, the best way to bleed it is as it will be on the bike, so the air comes right out the top there. Suck it up into the syringe, nice and slow. If you go too fast, you end up with loads of air bubbles in the fluid, so we don't want to do that. You only need 25, 30 mil to fill a hole, a hole break. I know McGuire would do lots of like 250 mil or a litre bottles of fluid, but you don't need to use all that much, it'll last you forever. So that goes into the slave cylinder at the bottom. Snip the fitting in. So I'll have the um, first cylinder that the hose from the syringe goes into at the bottom. Start squeezing fluid through slowly. And if you can kind of imagine the path of the fluid, so it's coming further in the cylinder out of this pipe and that pipe into this next cylinder we, we want to try and get the air out of the top so we need to orientate that round so the air is going to come out the top nice and slow and watch the lever it should start to come out of the lever up there there we go normally if you're using like a Magura fluid it's a bit a bit manky so we'd put a, a, a pipe on there and run it into a bag or something but this is a, as far as I know it's water based but it's quite different to just plain water it's not so bad and we just put it just put it into there. And carefully put the bleed screw back into the lever. And that caps the system off. So when you take the syringe out the bottom, it doesn't all just fluid just doesn't all pour out. Which may or may not have happened just a second ago when the uh, syringe fell off the pipe. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't need to be super tight, it just needs to be nipped in. So only a three mil allen key fitting, so if you go to town on it you you might yeah. snap the snap the fitting or round it out. And at this point you should it should be quite obvious that there's fluid in that hole. No, if yeah. there's no fluid in the hole, something's going wrong, but that is full. Alright, moment of truth. There we go. So, the way to test that a brake is properly bled is as soon as you pull the lever, the, sir the, the syringe, the slave cylinder should start to move. If it doesn't move immediately, that means that you're compressing air first and then pushing fluid. So, hopefully, I've got this right. If you hold one of the pistons in, as soon as you pull the lever, so there's a little bit of movement there on the lever before the piston's moving. So there is a bit of air in that system somewhere, which is it's pretty common when you first bleed a brake, because the fluid will stick, uh, the air will stick to the inside of the hose and what have you. So the tri trick to that is just to pull the lever loads of times, get the air moving, get the, yeah. get the, get the uh, fluid moving, and the air will generally float into the lever. And so he's been pulling the lever on and off quite a few times, and now there's a really distinct kind of two-stage feel to the lever, so that first bit is really obviously air. Yeah. And when you get to there, you can feel it starting to push fluid. Um, so that means all the air's ri risen into the cylinder, the, the master cylinder here, and it's quite easy to get rid of. So we've got something that we call a top trick. Um, so you basically end up plugging in a syringe full of fluid just into the top of the lever here. So you haven't got to do a full bleed. You can do this on the bike as well. I used to do this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Take the top out of the syringe. Screw that in there. Just give it a little nip in. Bit of fluid in there. And as I pull the lever now, we should hopefully see air bubbles coming through this pipe. See them there. So that's getting the air out of the brake. You can just see them moving in the moving in the hose. As long as you go slowly and keep pulling the brake backwards and forwards, the air will work its way upwards using gravity. And then you're sucking fresh fluid back in and replacing the air that was in there with fluid. That's another bubble. That looks pretty good. Just move it down into that position again so that that's now the highest point in the system. More bubbles. That's another advantage of using water or triatic fluid is that it's much with it being much thinner the bubbles travel more quickly and they, you haven't got to spend ages waiting for them to travel up, uphill. Cool, that looks good. We can save that for later. Just 
the finger over the end of the hose will stop the uh, fluid from draining out. And you can take that to your bottle. Point of truth, that feels better. So hopefully now, as soon as we pull the lever, we should get some movement at the slave cylinder. There we go. And hopefully, compared to earlier on, the speed is much quicker, yeah. So that'll feel easier. Um, you can also um, use a bit of lubricant. These seals tend to dry out, especially when you use water. So if you push the push the cylinder out, it's a bit of wet chain lube. It's a little drop on there, just around the edge of the seal, and that'll work itself in. And then repeat with the other side. So you hold one hold one piston in, pull the lever, little drop of lube. Doesn't need much. Nice. Sorted. And that will help reduce the amount of effort needed to pull the lever, so hopefully my arms will last longer. <laughs> hopefully. By the way, my finger, I'm not sure you can see that mark right there. Put a focus. That's where I got my blister from riding this bike last month, and it's only just kind of healed, so yeah, I need to wear gloves next time, I think. Alright, guys, so. There's one thing I'm going to spend some money on. Uh, I'm going to go all out <laughs> and <laughs> get some new, what are these called again? Uh, slave cylinder washers. So that is the old cylinder washer. This is just what goes around the cylinder there and it's what the clamps actually clamp onto so you're not damaging your brake. That is the old one and uh, hopefully if it focuses you can see it's got some pretty big gouges and marks which makes setting up the brake kind of tricky, the brake will just want to kind of go into those grooves and not where you necessarily want it to go. So to get rid of that, I've got a nice new shiny one here. You can see that is how they're meant to look and that gives you full freedom to allow the brake to go exactly where you want it to go and set up the brake a lot easier. And they're only a couple of quid and they make life a lot easier so I may as well get some new ones of those. So another little common thing you find on, especially on second hand bikes, when you tighten in the brake clamps down onto the frame, the underside of the bolt head kind of mashes the material around the slot, hopefully you can see that. So when you're trying to put the bolt in, it actually doesn't want to go in. So if you can imagine you're trying to slide the brake up and down to adjust the height, yeah. it's a right pain in the bum. So you can literally just run a file through them and open them out to, to the original size and that repairs them as good as new rather than having to change them. So your slot needs to be about just over 5mm which is the size of the bolt. Doesn't take much, just enough to let the bolt drop in and slide up and down easily. So the other way to, if you want to open out the slots on these sort of mushed brake clamps is just use a drill, 5mm drill bit. You can kind of go around the slot and just open it back out again. Hopefully, that should allow the bolt to just drop in. There we go, yeah. And it now slides easily. So you've got the adjustment there that you need to set the brake up. Uh, just popping a bit of grease on the threads of the bolts. Um, obviously going down steel bolt, aluminium frame, pretty tight. If you put them in dry, like the BB, it's likely they're just gonna seize up and then you're, you're stuck, basically. So a bit of grease goes a long way. Um, and just pop, start putting the mask on so we can clamp the, uh, clamp the brake to the frame. Again, these should, these should go in like by hand to start with. If it's getting stuck, don't force it because it's a really intricate part of the bike. And if you can get the stuck bolt out, you can run a new thread in there, but it's a little bit tricky. So just be a little bit careful to start with and just just go by hand and uh, see how you go. <coughs> yeah, brake pads. Uh, there's, there's a lot of choice of brake pads. You know, some are for smooth rim, so just like the, an unprepared surface like that, and they'll grab pretty well as long as it's not wet or dirty. Yeah. Um, if you're going to grind the rim, so this one is old and dead but it, it runs vertical lines through the rim. It's kind of roughening the surface up. So a soft pad that will bite into a smooth rim will just get destroyed and just turn to dust on a ground rim. So we need to get you some pads that will match the grind. Um, they'll make quite a bit of noise, but that noise generally means the brake's working. Um, so I'll pop in the wear, I'll see what we've got, and then... Uh, and then with the grind, they'll work a lot better in the wet. Exactly, yeah. 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 So when I stopped riding competitions, I think Cox Browns 
were about Browns. some of the best pads you could get, yeah. and then TNN were starting to make pads as well. So Cox Browns were made by a chap called Thierry Klinkenberg, who is an ex trials rider okay. in Belgium, and TK pads still make Cox Browns, no way. as well as the yellows that he also did. Yeah, and they're still they're still really good pads. Yeah. Um, they're well they're good on a grind, work in the wet. Um, so they're, they're a really good shout. Um, the next up, upgrade from something like that would be something with a, a metal backing. So these have got a CNC machined aluminium backing. Yeah. So when you're obviously pushing the force in the center of the pad here from the brake cylinder, the plastic backings want to flex, whereas this transfers all the force straight into the rim. So that's quite a nice little upgrade. Um, and then going forward, you can just change the material. And okay. there's, there's like a couple of different standards for the size of the pockets at the, because the like recessed pocket and the material goes into the recesses. There's a couple of different standards, but you can generally get a few different pad materials for each. So that's something that you spend a bit more to start with, but they're then cheaper, you know, yeah. going forward. There's those TK pads, or there's actually some Couste pads. Oh, uh, Couste? Yeah, legendary. So Michel Castillier is the father of Gilles and Jaco, two top trials riders still. Yeah. Uh, he makes, he hand makes these in France. Um, I remember so those being like, the ultimate pads that people were trying to sell their teeth to get. Yeah, basically, and now he's made them available, like so you can actually buy. You know, we've got a good stock of them. So I always wanted to try a set. There you go, and they're a cool green color, so they'll go really <laughs> nice for your frame. <laughs> like, yeah, maybe. <laughs> give, them, give them a try. Yeah, I'll, sweet. I've Sounds always good. wanted to try some. Yeah, let's go for them. Wicked. Some of the uh, brake pads come in different thicknesses. So these these Coose pads have got eight mil material. A lot of them will come with like six or seven, and then some of the Coose pads come with ten mil. So we're just making sure that you can actually get the rim in, in, the, in yeah. the frame. So push the cylinders all the way back and just check the, the gap between the pads. So we've got, yeah, about three or four mil more than the width of the rim. So we're good to go. Setting up the brakes is, can be a bit fiddly, but with the new cylinder washers and grease on the bolts and all the, and all the slots sort of filed out, this should be straightforward. Yeah. So. so, I mean, we have gone into like quite a lot of detail about setting up these brakes so far, but that is literally just to make life a lot easier. It is possible to set up the brakes without doing a lot of the stuff we've done, but it's gonna, it, you might run into some difficulties. Yeah, it's kind of one of those stitching time saves nine kind of pro proverbs, you know, you do all the work before and after that it's, it's straightforward. Like painting, you know, you do all the prep. Yeah. It's nothing more frustrating than getting a brake perfectly lined up and then you nip up the bolts and it's suddenly moves. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's actually a really common symptom of the sort of mashed up cylinder washers that we saw before. Because um, they, they want, like you say, they want to find a certain certain specific position. So you do a last little tension and then pff, whole wheel moves. What I normally do is don't tighten the, the bolts up all the way to start with. And get the lever set up how you like it in terms of the amount of travel the lever's got. Uh, and then from there, we can go and start tightening the bolts down. But you want the pad to be ideally completely flush with the rim, so that's front to back, up and down. Um, it's sometimes hard to kind of eyeball it from here, but if you pull the lever really slowly and watch the gap decrease on a bit of rim that's not too battered, <laughs> you can usually see it quite easily. So that, that pad is really, really square with the, with the rim, but if you look at the side, it's actually way too low at the moment, so it needs to be, needs to be shifted up because it's hanging off the bottom of the rim. But hopefully, with our slots having been filed out that should be nice and easy I usually just tap with an allen key because it moves quite nicely that way we have motion does it hold? Yeah. Oh, a little oh, bit a little bit might, I mean might be bedding in yeah. one of those trials break things again where the, the the pad and the rim aren't quite square it'll kind of go like that yeah but when it's all bedded in together it's all flush and it'll go <laughs> Oh, those two, they're escaping. <laughs> it's taking so long to build this thing. All right. <laughs> Cheers, guys. YouTube. See you later, guys. Tomorrow, like you <laughs> <it now. laughs> See you later.